Hello children, welcome for the topic today from Ray Optics of Class 12 Standard Physics. The topic is Refraction at Convex Spherical Surface for object in rarer medium and image in denser medium. That image is real image. Okay, let us start with. Before starting, we are going to have some assumptions. So, what are all the basic assumptions? The assumptions are the convex surface is with small aperture 1. Second, there is point object situated on the principal axis. Third assumption, incident ray, refracted ray and normal at the point of incidence. All are making angles alpha, beta, gamma respectively with principal axis. They are all very small because the surface is of small aperture. So, these are the three assumptions. Now, Cartesian sign convention. All distances are measured from pole of the refracting surface. Second, when they are measured from pole of the refracting surface, if they are measured in the same direction of incident ray taken as positive, if they are measured in the opposite direction of incident ray taken as negative. Got it? So, with these assumptions and Cartesian sign convention, let us proceed further with the ray diagram. When you draw a ray diagram, you should have scale, pencil, eraser. So, with big scale, you can make the ray diagram, but we are all experienced. So, Without using scale, we can draw neat labeled ray diagram. So, we are going to make convex refracting surface. So, consider this as a glass rod with the projection. It is glass material. So, it is second medium and the first medium is air medium. And here the middle point, if you take that is, that is called pole and XPY is the convex refracting surface. It is projected towards air, it is glass. This is glass, it is air. Okay. And if you pass the line through P and center of curvature, that is principal axis. Okay. Now, if we keep the object point object little far away from pole, the image will be formed on the other side inside the denser medium. So, let us make the ray incident at the point E and normal at the point will pass through C. This is normal and this is glass medium. It is and this angle is between incident ray and the normal called angle of incidence and the ray now will bend towards normal, towards this normal and this ray is angle of refraction. The incident ray making angle alpha with principal axis, the refracted ray making angle beta with refracted air with principal axis, the normal at the point of incidence E making gamma angle with principal axis. After mentioning it, you make one normal line from the point of incidence to principal axis. Now, as the surface is of small aperture x to y line, p and n are considered very closely located two points. So, if you measure the distance from n, it is equal to the distance from p. Okay. Now, we know Snell's law. Snell's law, see, so we need this part of the, this is image. Another ray going through this will meet the first refracted ray at this point. So, this is real image on principal axis formed in denser medium. So, now Snell's law says mu of second medium with respect to first medium is equal to first medium having i, second medium is having r. So, you can write it as sin i by sin r which is also equal to i by angle i divided by angle r because sin i is equal to i, sin r is equal to r if i and r are small because 
the surface is of small aperture so i and r angles are small only i'll also you know refract index of second medium with respect to first medium is absolute refractive index of second medium divided by absolute refractive index of first medium so from this you can make one equation mu1 into i is equal to mu2 into r now i am going to express i and r in terms of alpha beta gamma i can write i as exterior angle of the triangle e o c so interior two angles for this triangle alpha and gamma so the exterior angle i is sum of the interior angles alpha and gamma the same way mu2 is interior angle of so mu2 r is interior angle of the triangle e c i so you can write r plus beta is equal to gamma r plus beta is equal to gamma means gamma r is equal to gamma minus beta so i can write gamma minus beta after writing this you can write alpha gamma beta all these in terms of tan because they are very small angles because the refracting surface is of small aperture so i can write the same step as mu1 into tan alpha plus tan gamma equal to mu2 into mu2 into tan gamma minus tan beta we can write like this now let us substitute the values of tan alpha and tan gamma and let us substitute this side tan gamma minus tan beta so what is tan alpha from the right angle triangle eno tan alpha is en divided by no so it is en divided by no and tan gamma in the same enc triangle tan gamma en divided by nc so it is en divided by nc again here tan gamma is same en divided by nc minus tan beta from this triangle eni en divided by ni en divided by ni so you do wrote this equation in this all distances from n n n n it can be measured from p because n is very close to p so next step you can change distance from n can be changed from distance from p because n and p are very closely located points so now let us take uh, im object and image on the same side and pc on the other side so you can write it as mu1 by mu1 by mu1 into en divided by if we take all these terms in this case mu1 en mu1 en mu2 en mu2 en so en gets cancelled in all these terms on left side as well as on right side so you can write mu1 by po and you want to take it to next side this pc term with mu1 mu1 by pc taken on the other side and this mu2 by pi is brought on the left side from minus sign to plus sign so it is mu2 by pi and already mu2 by pc and bringing mu1 by pc other side by pc now sign convention po distance of object from pole in the opposite direction of incident ray so it is taken as minus u distance of image from pole pole to i in the same direction of incident ray so plus v image distance distance of center of curvature from p pc in the same direction of incident ray so it is plus r radius of curvature now writing mu1 of air if it is air medium the absolute refractive index of air medium is 1 if it is glass medium its absolute refractive index is just called as mu1 
So if you substitute along with this Cartesian sign convention and mu1, mu2 values, this equation will become as minus u and mu1, minus 1 by u plus mu by b is equal to mu minus 1, pc is common r. That's all. This is the equation for refraction through convex refracting surface. When the object is in rarer medium and the real image formed in denser medium. You can remember this equation also. You can remember this equation also. Object distance from pole, object rotated, located in mu1 medium. Real object so plus. Image distance from pole, image is image ray located in mu2 medium. So it's real image plus mu2 minus mu1 divided by pc. You can overall write divided by pc. So this common equation, general equation and from this general equation you are substituting Cartesian sign convention and substituting for mu1 of air medium is 1, mu2 of glass medium is mu. If you write this is the final expression for refraction through convex refracting surface for object in rarer medium and real image formed in denser medium. The same equation if you bring the object still closer still closer to the convex refracting surface. This is glass rod, convex refracting surface, x p pole, y and center of curvature, principal axis. The object is very close to pole. For now, a real image not we are considering object in rarer medium, virtual image, how is it formed? Now we consider the object is very close to pole in rarer medium. It is a glass medium, denser medium. This is air medium, rarer medium of refractive index mu1 of refractive index mu2. And at this point E, the ray consider here pole you make outside the surface. Okay. And now the normal should pass through center of curvature. This is angle of incidence ray. And if you draw, it will go like this. It means it appears to come from here, another ray going like this. So these two refracted ray won't intersect on the other side, means they form the virtual image on the same side of the object. So this is object in rarer medium, an image formed in the rarer medium itself means virtual image. So now I you know, R you know. The incident ray making alpha angle with principal axis. A refracted ray making beta angle with principal axis and normal making gamma angle with principal axis. The same assumptions you have to make and same Cartesian sign convention and here the same derivation only think this some way change is there for virtual image. The same mu of second medium with respect to first medium sin i by sin r, i by r because of surfaces of small aperture is also mu2 by mu1, mu1 into i is equal to mu2 into r, here also i is alpha plus gamma no doubt, but here if you take r from this triangle eic, r is equal to gamma plus beta, for real image you got gamma minus beta, but for virtual image, you are getting gamma plus beta. So, this will become as tan gamma plus beta, tan gamma plus beta, tan beta. You will write. And here, en, en, en in all the terms gets cancelled. So, this plus mu2 by pi will become as minus mu2 by pi for virtual image. And here, the sign convention. PO is minus U, PI is minus V, minus V. So only here for real image you got it as plus me 2 by PI. Now for virtual image you are getting minus P2 by PI. Otherwise if you substitute this sign convention the same formula you will have minus 1 by U 
plus mu by v equal to mu minus 1 by r. So, refraction through convex spherical surface for object in rarer medium, object in rarer medium, image in denser medium forming for real image, this mu1 by PO plus mu2 by PI means for virtual image in this case, mu1 by PO minus mu2 by PI but this final expression is same for convex surface, for real image as well as for virtual image when the object is in rarer medium. An image formed in denser medium is called a real image and the object in rarer medium, image is in rarer medium itself forming means virtual image. For both the cases, this is the final expression, same expression. Hope you understand this. Thank you.